Hi, I'm Dan Liebel, a senior consultant at Stone Ridge Software, covering Introduction to Managed Reporter. This session is about reporting trees. So let's switch over to Management Reporter and go into reporting trees, or what I call the slicer and dicer reports. We'll first open reporting tree definitions, and there you can see a listing of all of the existing reporting trees. The best way to start talking about reporting trees, I think, is to show how to add them in. That makes the most sense. So if we click New to get a new clean slate, and then click Edit, Insert Reporting Units from Dimensions, <coughs> it opens up another window. And if you sat through the row definitions, you know that the uh, demo data has many, many dimensions in its uh, financial dimensions. So this is a listing of all of the options that you can do to slice and dice or create your reports. So what you want to do on a tree is to select a few that you can zero in on if it's possible. It's possible that you may need to have seven or eight different uh, uh, dimensions in your tree, uh, but it does get kind of complex to select and to see what you need to, to create. So in this case, I think we'll just start with business unit and department. So uh, the way it works is if it, the box is checked or it's in your your hierarchy down below, then it's going to be included in the tree. So we'll need to uncheck all of these boxes that are not business unit or department to get it down to this the dimensions that we want to show on our tree. A couple more, and then we'll have just the business unit and department. Um, off to the right, you notice the from and to dimension. So if we wanted to do a range of business units or a range of departments, I could put in that range there. But in this case, um, we'll skip that. And you can also change your hierarchy. So maybe you want departments on top and business units below. Um, you could do it that way as well, just by clicking move up or move down. So depending on which one you select, it's going to be um, the option. If you have multiple trees, then obviously you could do both if you have one in the middle. But we'll click OK and we'll just leave it as it is. And the first thing you notice is we get a little, um, this is our quote unquote tree. So we have the summary of all units as the top level and that's going to be there for every tree that you create. But then you have um, the business units of none, home, auto, and fashion. And then you have the operations beneath those specific business units. And I like to keep my trees um, relatively simple, so um, that's why I've just selected the two. So after, uh, the other thing that you can do with this is <coughs> you can promote or demote. So if you wanted to change a level or if, there, if there's a level that's out of place, you can change it. Um, given this, let's, because there is no business unit for none, we'll do the uh, operations. out to the same level as the business unit. And then we'll go over, let's look at some of the columns in, in the layout over to the right. We're not going to discuss all of them, but we'll discuss uh, the ones that are most common. First thing to notice is the company. So the company that I imported them from, I'm logged in to um, the USMFF, USMF um, and the AX, so that's the reason that tree was brought in or that's the, tr the company that I have connected to. The unit name and unit description are pulled from your dimensions in AX. So you may need to overwrite the unit name because that's what will show up on your reports. So if you have external readers of your financial statements, Department 23 may not make sense. So what I would probably recommend is to copy the description over the unit name or put in some sort of a descriptor to make it more understandable or un able for external readers to follow. So you can highlight and then right click and copy. So we'll move that over here to make it look a little better. We'll do the range. You can also use control C and control V uh, if you prefer. So it's just like Excel in that form in that map in that manner and that you can utilize the right click and just copy and paste cells. So that gives you a better description in that unit name so when you show on reports it'll be a more meaningful uh, 
description of that particular node than the, the numeric value. Um, skipping over to the dimensions column, let me spread this out a little bit. That's going to be brought in from your AX system. Uh, the business unit and the department that match up with that particular node that it saw. And you can edit this as well, so you can manually enter these in or with the import it, it populates. It can be um, changed to a range, so if I would double click on a cell, it gives me the ability to go into the departments and I can do a range of departments here if I chose to and click OK. Then um, it would give you um, a look like that or I could also double click in there. can use a wildcard such as a question mark which is the wildcard character. So in that scenario the department would be um, zero two question marks so that would include any department that started with zero two would be included in that in that node. Let's go over to um, a little further to the right. Um, some of these other columns we won't discuss because they're either advanced or uh, rarely used so we won't cover those but if we click on the page options you can change it to a non-printing row or unit. So in that case, there might be situations where you may want to include a node in the report but not show it. So in a case like that, you would change that node to non-printing so it wouldn't show up. The next part that we want to talk about is unit security. And we're going to open up the department's one because I don't have any unit security set up, just to show you a little bit how it would look. Um, this is set to everyone, but if we would select um, the sales and marketing department, I could double click on that and that's going to be, uh, you can add users and groups so whatever your active directory is set up as you can add um, additional um, users or groups to the specific node. The thing to, to note about the unit security is if it's blank then everybody can view it. If it's got a, uh, if you're using unit security whoever is added has visibility so keep this in mind that not only will like the sales and marketing department heads be able to see this, but if you want any admin people or accounting, for example, they would also have to be added in order to view that on this particular tree. You could have a separate, you could have a second tree that would allow them to view that, but in this particular tree, they would have to, if this particular tree is used on the report, you would have to have the users entered that would have to have visibility to it. Next, I want to talk about organizational hierarchies. If uh, those became available in AX 2012, and if you're using your organizational hierarchies and they represent the way that you would utilize trees, uh, as in one of the same and in the exact same way that you'd want to picture it, you can utilize organizational hierarchies. Uh, there's no anything additional that you would need to do. They, will, they are automatically added to Manager Reporter from AX as you change your trees or organizational hierarchies. So if you're using organizational hierarchies and they represent the way you'd want to slice and dice your reports, then you don't need to do anything with reporting trees. You can just use the organizational hierarchy in the, on the report. Last thing that I want to talk about is consolidations. And we're not going to go in depth, but I'm just going to mention how it would work. And that is... If you notice the company column here, we have at any at the very top, and that would be a summary of all departments. But I could create a consolidation reporting tree, and if I wanted to, I could select, um, this is a list of all of the companies in the demo data, I could select each row as a different company and then have one consolidation report. So I wouldn't have to manually combine all of the different company reports into one report. To close out reporting trees, the last thing I want to talk about is saving a, a reporting tree. You can create a new one. Uh, if, you, if it's a brand new tree, you can click save and it'll pop up the save as window, but to, we'll just do the save as window here. So you just give it a name that's a descriptive, so if it's for departments or if it's for uh, business units or, or if it's a combination of then you can do that, or business units and cost centers. And again, you don't have to have a description, but you can choose to have one. Um, again, make your, your names descriptive enough so that you know what's included in that tree. So then um, instead of Bob's tree or John's tree 
or Sally's tree, you can say department or BU department so that you notice know business units and departments, for example.